Hi, and welcome to another tutorial from Worship Media Pro. Today, I'm going to talk about ProPresenter 5 and Stage Display. Stage Display can be projected two different ways, one of them to an external monitor or projector. Another way is through something called Remote Stage Display. And this is projecting stage display to a wireless iPad. And you can download the application from the iTunes App Store. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is Stage Display on a remote monitor. So I'm going to click on, at the top, ProPresenter 5, and I'm going to go to Preferences. Inside Preferences, I'm going to choose Display, the very top, and I'm going to disable uh, Stage Display. And by default, it will be disabled. Now you notice here I have three different screens. I'm utilizing a MacBook Pro, and the right hand, I have a white bar. This indicates the laptop screen, uh, which will you know, generally be your uh, operator's screen. The next one is my output, annotated by out. And this is going to be my mini DVI that's native to the MacBook. And this will be my, my projector or, or monitors. The next one is SD, my stage display. Now this one, this uh, display is created by a USB to VGA adapter. And this is the Kingston 33928 and that's also called Display Link. Now the, the driver that ships with it is, uh, is incompatible with OS X Lion. So you can just go to the Display Link website and as of this recording it is 1.8A1. And I'll go ahead and provide a link as well for that. So that's gonna be my stage display and this is labeled SD. Now for my output screens, and this is really kind of covering uh, another tutorial, but I'm utilizing the HD or widescreen and uh, also known as 720p uh, with this uh, with these parameters here. Now let's go ahead and configure stage display. So I'm going to click on configure stage display here and you'll notice I have uh, two profiles that I've created and then a default profile. So uh, the first one being my SD is my external displays and projector. And I can add many different things. I can take away, um, I can add an additional countdown timer. Um, I can, uh, you know, add chords and, and, and uh, place those chords onto uh, the display. And I can also click on boxes and move boxes around. I can make boxes bigger to fill in the projector or, or LCD that you have on the stage display. I also have uh, current slide, current slide notes, and then next slide, next slide notes. A clock, a countdown timer, great for the worship band so they know how long they have on stage. And then a message alert box. So um, what happens here, you type in a message and it flashes. And then you're, uh, you're basically alerting them to look down at that message box. And it's only for the stage or only for stage display. And then I can have the flash be a certain color. I also have... Uh, let me go ahead and move over here. I can have flash be a certain color. I also have the ability to use text only. Highly recommend that because it keeps everything very simple, very easy to glance down and read, and it removes all kinds of uh, all the graphics that you might have on on the uh, slide. I can also set my font, which I have set to 40, and then I could make it uh, you know many different um, orientations: left, right, center. I just keep it center. And then my iPad. You'll notice everything is really the same on my iPad. Uh, I can make it a little bit more compact. I can remove things like I removed the next slide notes, not necessary. I can even remove the current slide notes probably and, and work on making this a lot bigger and, uh, and then moving over my current slides might help to, to add some more real estate here. And then getting rid of current slide notes, I can just uncheck that box. And then countdown timer is probably going to be maybe most important for my worship band because this could be on a mic stand. So I can make that really big. And, uh, and then of course, maybe I can make clock really big because that might matter as well. You know, however they uh, determine their time on stage. And then I can go ahead and close this out and it'll save it. So iPad is different from your projector stage display because the views will be different based on the real estate. And I can enable stage display and it will be on my USB to DVI adapter or VGA adapter. Now let's enable uh, remote stage display. So I'm going to click on the network icon at the top here underneath the uh, preferences again. And I'm going to enable remote stage display server. So click enable. I'm going to put a password on it. And in this case I put just W, very simple password. That's it. I have that configured. Let's jump into the iPad, take a look at what it looks like here. 
Now on the iPad, what you'll see on mine is two different uh, systems here. So these are two independent systems that have uh, ProPresenter 5 executed right now and, uh, and currently in use. Now uh, one of them is labeled Parker and we can just call that the Children's Ministry. So we don't want to select that for the main sanctuary. The main sanctuary is Tony Parker's MacBook Pro. And you can label this accordingly, uh, whatever will be easy for, uh, for the folks on uh, or utilizing stage display or your media team setting all this up. So I just select Tony Parker's MacBook Pro because that is going to be my, my main sanctuary. Put in W, hit connect. And once I hit connect, it's going to uh, pop up a blank screen. Not to worry, just click on that uh, black screen and then you'll see at the very top, a bar, top right, I select my profile and I'm going to select my iPad and now it will show you the customized display for your iPad. When you're all done utilizing uh, the stage display and you want to exit out, just click on a uh, black area and then you want to, uh, it'll, it'll show the top bar again, you want to click on log out top left hand side. So that's it, plain and simple, stage display, external monitor, and uh, an iPad utilizing an application you can download from the iTunes App Store. Hopefully this was very informative, wanted to keep it short. Leave comments, uh, other tutorials you'd like to see, and what you thought of this tutorial. I'll also put that display link driver at, at the bottom of this video as well. Thanks so much.